All right, Nate, grab your horse. We're heading to the Old West. Yeehaw! If you like this video, subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. When you pull that off, you're ready for a gun. See you later, Johnny. Nate, you and I jumped into the Old West with Desperados 3, a prequel to the launch of the game in 2001. This is a real-time tactical game set in a isometrical top-down view. And I think, honestly, you and I had complications when it came to the camera controls, but the actual gameplay and story of the game was really, really cool. Oh, absolutely, man. So, you know, for me, this kind of type of game strikes home with me. I grew up playing Commandos. Most people probably haven't even heard of this, but <laughs> this is the first game that I've played since then that's actually this genre. So, man, this struck home, like I said. the There's about five or six characters, sorry, and each of them kind of have a set of abilities. Yep. One is your, you know, one guy has a bear trap and he's really strong carry more bodies one guy has a snipe rifle and kind of like a lure bag whereas another girl has like disguise available so there's lots of different characters available that you kind of slowly unlock as the game progresses yeah i like dr mccoy he's the one with the sniper which is a very unique perspective when you actually handle his character you're able to swap between characters over up in the right corner hold by holding down the right bumper or their abilities by holding down the left bumper and you kind of cycle through those and the sniper i thought that perspective was so unique because you're still down in that top down view but then you get a scope that shows up and allows you to kind of hover over your targets you're able to zoom in and out by holding down the trigger and moving man honestly nate the controls for the camera was probably the biggest problem of this game for me but you hold down the right trigger which then pulls up a wheel that allows you to move around and stuff and you zoom in and then you pivot at the same time or if you let go of that trigger you just move with the right trigger or sorry the right analog stick which then pivots the whole camera up and down the problem being is your characters are somewhere else on the map at times while you're moving this camera and it just becomes so cumbersome that you lose track of where you are there is with the help of the d-pad yeah. the ability to recenter yourself but it's still just it's such a disconnect and i wanted something more of the camera that would follow my characters as i progress through each level instead of having this it almost felt like it was on pc in a sense you know what i mean Absolutely, because you know the game that I grew up playing was on PC, sure. and you can you can really feel that this game would <laughs> excel with a mouse and keyboard. Just with this style of game, it is you know it's a hard thing to kind of master the controller mapping. So I don't know, man. I don't know what exactly they could do because I just found myself really kind of struggling for the first little while of just how to navigate around the map. Yeah, absolutely, works for me. What are you doing? He doesn't need that money anymore. Money, huh? Heads down. All right, so the story I thought was, again, where this game excelled. You're kind of following this character, Cooper, and as he's tracking down this guy named Frank, which you don't really know much about. You just know that his name's Frank and that he may be a good guy or a bad guy. And along the way, you meet all these other characters like McCoy, who's kind of outset doing his own thing, but ends up helping you along the way. And then you reunite with an old buddy who's this really big, strong guy. And again, somehow you just kind of cross your stories with this woman named O'Hara. And then you end up helping her. So just all in all, the way they kind of progress the story through each mission, it they did a really good job. And the story really opens up. It takes a while, you know. Because these missions aren't short. They're really long. Yeah. So this game kind of takes a while to really open up to the main story. It is, it's a cool story. It's a cool aspect of how they introduce you to each of these characters. And the fact that it is a stealth game as well really kind of fits my play style a lot, to be honest, Nate. I had a great time taking my time, getting my positions right. And then you've got the ability to use your skills 
and as well as you suddenly go down into like this time game mode where you're able to almost kind of set it up like an XCOM in a sense that you plan out your skill, your next move, as well as your buddy's next move, and then you let that unfold, and then you see kind of how it all plays out, and you're able to take out your targets the way you want to, and I thought that was a really neat aspect that you're able to bring into the game as well, instead of just going around for this real-time tactical kind of game mode at the same time. Yeah, because, man, there are a lot of times where you can't just take out one guard. You sometimes no. have to take two to three guards out at the same time or simultaneously so you don't get caught. Because yep. that's another thing with this game. There are <sighs> guards everywhere, and if as soon as someone gets caught, it sets off an alarm, which immediately spawns a ton of guards yeah. permanently on the map. So you're, honestly... Granted, you know, a couple of missions you have to set off the alarm, but for the most part, you're kind of set out not setting it, or else you're kind of lost. <laughs> yeah, it gets really tough too, but I do like the fact that when you die, you can instantly respawn relatively quickly, and they ask you to save a lot. Like, so if you don't save over the progression of like 30 seconds to a minute, it actually prompts up a window when you saved last. So it's kind of that risk reward if you want to kind of draw that out and not say you're taking a bit of a chance because this game is going to have you die a lot of times oh absolutely man that over and over again the the quick save feature by just quickly pressing the select button at any time is amazing and yeah. having that reminder available and be able to set the time too because i found a minute sometimes is a little bit irritating yeah yeah <laughs> but, that's fair. but you can you can you know customize that I, what a great feature to have in this style of game. You guys don't do half measures. Ah. See you later. Nate, one of the cool aspects of the game is actually when you complete the game, because it's not quite done, you're able to go back and do this challenge mode, which gives you a sense of replayability and not just a once and done kind of playthrough. But overall, our time with Desperados 3, I think, was a great time. Nate, what are you scoring this one? Oh, man, I had a really good time. This game struck home. I love the tactical aspect. The graphics absolutely attracted me, man. I'm going to have to give this one an 8.5. The biggest thing is the camera controls, man. If they could somehow kind of fix that, yeah. this game could almost be perfect. Almost. I'm right there with you. I love the art style. I love the stealth aspect. And the way you're able to go down in this showdown mode is super cool. But that camera angle is a real nuisance. <laughs> I'm there with an 8. One fake coin coming up. You gotta go kill me with you. You he didn't hear the coin. A great western real-time tactical game with good storytelling and character building. The camera controls were the only hindrance. <laughs> this is nothing. We've got plenty of room. <laughs> Not your lucky day, is it? That's it. All done. <laughs>